Hey everyone, my name is Eric Jones, better known as Turf Teacher. We are going to uh, look at a topic uh, or discuss a topic entitled Marketing Landscape Management Services. Now, guys, when it comes to residential landscape management services, this is the prime time to start marketing for those services. You know, today uh, is February 4th. Uh, 2019 it is the time to beat down the doors we have beautiful weather outside we even have a high of like 67 degrees today so what's happening in potential residential clients minds is oh I need to start thinking about landscaping hey the Super Bowl is over it's time for spring that's that's what people are thinking it is now February we've started seeing um, Carolina jasmine blooming so people's eyes are waking up. It's not going to be long before forsythia is going to be blooming. It may even be blooming depending on uh, where you at or where you've been, uh, you know, the past week the, of seeing the forsythia bloom. So guys, people's minds are starting to change. They're starting to think about management services. Now, it's a little bit different if you're marketing to commercial clients. This isn't the time of year to do that. That should be done uh, back in the summertime, usually depending on when their um, you know, their physical gear ends. A lot of commercial properties, real estate management company firms, you know, their, their physical gear ends in uh, July. Um, or they may run from June 30th or uh, July 1st through June 30th or, you know, August 1st to July 31st. You know, when I was in the military, our physical year um, was uh, October 1st to September 30th. So, I mean, it just depends on that. But a lot of businesses run on that physical year starting in the summertime versus doing it in the uh, first of the year. But right now, residential clients are starting to think about management services for their property, whether it be turf care, new landscape, getting some annuals coming up here in the next couple months. They're, they're, they're already thinking about that. So you need to be not only knocking on doors, but also boosting your social media content right now for these services that they're wanting. And so we'll talk a little bit about social media first. Um, and guys, hopefully, hopefully you are already using Facebook definitely. I think that is the biggest um, place we need to be pushing content out for residential clients. Um, next would be Instagram, uh, definitely YouTube, definitely Snapchat, uh, maybe even Pinterest. If you are giving little how-tos uh, on how to build a bird box or how to install uh, a tree, Pinterest is great for that. And then LinkedIn, if you're going after commercial clients, you need to have a LinkedIn page and that needs to be a place for, for white pages, if you're doing a blog, it needs to be on LinkedIn. If you've put up a YouTube, you need to have it linked to LinkedIn. All these social media sites should work back and forth uh, with, each, with, with each other. And so get on it right now. Start doing the Facebook ads. Start doing the Instagram ads. Spend the seven to eight bucks to get in front of a thousand customers. Do it. Don't don't be afraid to do it. Don't be afraid to spend seven dollars. Um, a lot of companies that I know will spend big bucks to go to a trade show. They'll spend, you know, twenty five hundred dollars on a trade show booth, but they won't spend two hundred dollars marketing their product on Facebook or Instagram. I just don't get it, um, and I don't know if it's because this is so new. Is it, is it scaring people? This is the land grab of social media. And the more content that you can place on your sites, the more customers you, you can attract, the more potential employees you can attract. It's all about being known. And people don't want to see a commercial guys on your social media site. They want to see the TV show. They want you to be the the reality TV show. We're in the green industry. Accept it. People want to be like us. They envy us. I got so many friends that sit in a cubicle all day long writing code, working on a computer. They don't even see the sunlight. 
from the time they walk into their office building until the time that they leave to go home. And if it's the winter time, they're not even going to see sunlight because a lot of them have to even take their lunch or they're having to work through their lunch, do a working lunch. Guys, document what you do. If you're a student in horticulture, document what you're doing. You're going to be marketable to so many landscape companies out there or greenhouses or nursery operations. If you're an employer, document what you're doing. You're going to attract those employees that want to come and work for you. And you're also going to attract new customers based on your social media content. Yes, do you need a website? Absolutely. But we use our website to host our social media sites, to host our podcasts, to host our vlog, to host a way for customers to log in and pay their account. It's a place for them to also send us a message on receiving services, but it's not our number one marketing plan. Your number one marketing plan in the green industry right now should be social media and daily content, documenting what you're doing. Don't worry about being creative. Don't worry about, should I, should I write the story before I do the video? No, pick up the camera and do the video do the short video, do it for Instagram TV, do it for YouTube, do it for Snapchat, post, post, post away, and you will see your return on investment of your time unfolding. It may take two weeks, it may take two months, it could take two years, but you've got to push the content and you've got to embrace this and you have to enjoy it and you have to be happy about doing it. And if you can do it, do it. I don't know how many times I keep telling people you're going to hear this over and over and no matter where you hear me talk, if it's, in a, if it's in a classroom, if it's in a seminar, I'm going to preach this inside and out. So use the social media. Now, are there other streams of marketing uh, for landscape contractors and students? Yes. Yes. There's, I still believe in direct mail for certain types of clients. I still believe in picking up the phone call and, and asking for business, yes. I still believe in doing some direct email, yes. I still believe in stopping by places and dropping off a business card and putting a name with the face. All of this ties in together. Marketing, marketing all over your vehicles and all over your trailers. You have to have your vehicles looking like almost, and I, almost, like a race car. It needs to be lettered to the T. That is one mobile piece of advertising going up and down the street every day. And if your social media is attached to your vehicles, follow me on Facebook, follow me on Instagram, add me on Snapchat. If you have stuff like that all over, or just a, a place on your vehicles that's got your social media name and then the, the icons that you're using. If you see my truck, on the back tailgate, I've got the information for the landscape company, the landscape's all over the side, but on the rear fender well, I've got Turf Teacher. Underneath it, I've got the Snapchat logo, the Instagram, the Facebook, um, podcast, all of the social medias that I'm pushing out every single day is on the truck. It's even on the back glass for the landscape company. So use it and don't be afraid to use it. But the problem is, and what everybody seems to be experiencing right now is that business is up. You know, we've got more work than we can handle. Um, so, Eric, we don't need to market our business. No, guys, you don't, you don't need to think like that because who knows what's going to happen in two to three years. We may see a downcline in business. Then we're going to be thinking, ah, what do I need to do? What do I need to do to get more work? What do I need? You should be streamlining this every day, every week, every month. You should have some type of marketing plan or social media strategy that's going to educate your clients and keep them coming back to your page. That way, when the market does decline, you're still going to be remembered as the expert in what you do. I don't care if all you do is cut grass. You need to video it and document what you're doing every single day, every single day. Guys, you could turn social media not only into 
achieving and gaining new landscape customers, but you could actually become an influencer. And once you reach that status, you're gonna have people, uh, vendors wanting to market their product on your social media sites. So you might start receiving blowers, weed eaters, the racks that hold the blowers and weed eaters, you might start receiving products at no charge to you along with compensation once you reach influencer status. That is another source of revenue for you if the market did decline. But business is great right now. We cannot find workers. Guys, you're gonna find workers by marketing your landscape company on social media. The younger generation, 50% of the population today is less than 30 years old. They would rather lose their sense of smell than to lose their, their iPhones or the other types of phones they're using. They have to have that. But that's where they're looking. They're not looking in the paper. They're, not even, they're even walking away from websites such as Monster and, and, and other places that we advertised heavily on. They're finding their jobs on social media. One of my students last year, now working for a large company in Wilmington, found the advertisement on Instagram. Would he have found it buying a Wilmington paper? No, we're in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, and I had a student move to Wilmington because he found the company on Instagram. That's where you need to be marketing your company and for employees. Now, and you gotta have it for when the business declines. Not, not your business, but the economy. And you're gonna go through that. A lot of younger people have not seen that yet. They haven't gone through a recession or a downturn in the economy yet. It happens and you have to be prepared for that. And the only way to be prepared is to have that content that you're pushing out daily so that people know who you are. Um, the greatest reluctance for people investing in their landscape, guys, is price. They're, they're always gonna to come to that. They're always gonna think that they're gonna get it done cheaper. Um, it goes back to my saying, and, and again, I will hear, you'll hear me say this multiple times, we are colleagues, not competitors. And if one of my clients wants to try to negotiate a price down to somebody else, I will gladly walk away. I can fire the client just as well as I can an employee. I don't need your work. I value your work. And once you start taking on that mentality, things are gonna happen. And, it, and it's called a confidence. When you're meeting with the client and you're discussing um, your pricing and discussing what you can do for them, you have to be confident about your price. You can't, you can't stutter, you can't tense up, you cannot get nervous about it. And you say, this is my price. This is why I charge this most because this is who I am. This is the degree I have. I have the associate's degree in horticulture. I am a landscape contractor. I am a certified plant professional. I have a pesticide license. Here's my certificate of insurance where I'm carrying workers' comp general liability. And since I do design work too, I also have uh, errors and admissions. I'm legit. I have employees. I have W-2 employees. I'm writing them checks every week. I make weekly tax deposits because I'm a legitimate business. The Mo Blow and Go guys, they're not, they're not, they're not my colleagues and they're definitely not my competition because I won't lower myself to those standards. You see the trucks out there that I'm running? They've got my name all over the side of it. I am a legit business. I'm not a one person show. And it kind of bothers me seeing these smaller companies. Hey, it's just me. You know, I get some part-time help. I'm making $50,000 a year. That's all I need. And you know what? My spouse has a job. I don't even have to turn this money into Uncle Sam. I'm the stay-at-home parent, but I'm cutting 40, 50 yards a week with part-time help. No, I don't have a license. No, I don't have a pesticide license and I'm deaf. What is a landscape contract? Those aren't my colleagues and those aren't even my competitors. So I educate each and every one of my clients, each and every one of my potential clients. I'm not worried about price, not worried about price. You put me in front of the client, I guarantee you I will sell it. Guaranteed I will sell the job after they've talked to me. But if they're hunting only price, 
and they're looking for that cheap, cheap, cheap price, I can pick up on it. I stand up from the kitchen table and say, hey, go for it. I'll be glad to fix the problems that they've started next year at this time. So develop your marketing strategy. What is it that you're going to do? Market is neither selling nor advertising, although both may be an important part of a marketing strategy. Now, now think about that. It's not selling and it's not advertising. And guys, as a landscape contractor, you need to start being a media company. You need to start being that company that people want to log into YouTube, pull out their phones, watch your Instagram television 10-minute episodes. They want to see what's going on. Don't be the commercial, be the TV show. That's how you're gonna market yourself. You're marketing yourself to potential clients and you're marketing yourself to students graduating in a horticulture program or turf grass program or landscape architecture program. They wanna see what you're doing. That's how you get clients and that's how you get employees. And so to develop a marketing strategy, what, what questions should you ask yourself? Well, first, identify the service or product that you sell. You have, you have to focus on one thing and develop it well. Now, I know companies that, that perfect the outdoor kitchen. That company needs to focus 150% of its efforts in marketing that through their social media campaigns, through their direct mail. Find something. Monotonous work makes money. I don't care what you say. The landscape contractor cannot get up on a Monday morning and think that they're going to plant plants today and mulch, but tomorrow they're going to prune, so they have to unload their trucks. The, it, and it's harder for the smaller company to do that. The larger companies, they're doing that. They've got crews dedicated to certain types of services that they offer. And if you're small, if you're starting out small, you have to focus on one thing and one thing only. And if it's cutting grass, be proud to cut grass. Do it every single week and market it, market it, market it. And when I say market it, I mean document it. I should be saying document. Document, document, document it. Video it. Talk about what you're doing. If it's something as simple as putting stripes in the yard because you've got a new Skag turf tiger, do it. Show the pictures, tag Skag, tag lawn stripes, tag the city that you work in, hashtag it, blow it up and become that expert. Now, you may be cutting grass, you're getting tired of it, you're the business owner, you've got two employees now helping you. If you step back and start at an installation side, you could run that, maybe hire somebody else to fill in your spot. And so your mowing crew is mowing every single day. Because it, trust me when I say this, when you hire an employee, there's some employees that all they wanna do is cut grass. You're gonna make them mad and you could potentially lose them if you send them out on a mulching job or you put them on an installation crew. They, they're coming to work for you because they wanna mow, just like there's employees that want to plant plants. They have the green thumb, that's what they wanna do. If you start putting them on a mowing crew two days a week, you may lose them. So start small, build that segment of your, of your company, become that expert, and always think monotonous work makes you money because it does. Your crews cannot come in, load up, unload your trailers every single morning, spending 30, 45 minutes before they get out the door. Once they punch the clock in the morning, they need to be getting in the vehicles, going to the first job to make the money. So identify that service, identify that product, and blow it up. Identify and understand your potential customers. Now, Eric Jones, the turf teacher, his favorite, his favorite client to work for is the new couple that's just recently married or gotten together. They've bought their first starter house. They live on a postage stamp lot, the very small house. Now this is coming from the mowing standpoint. Monotonous work makes money. I love these new neighborhoods that builders go in and clean cut, clear cut the property. They put up the vinyl side and houses. They have a small fenced in backyard, but you know what? I can go in and I can cut these yards in 10 minutes. And so that allows me to cut six to eight an hour, maybe even more. Some of these yards we can cut in five minutes if it doesn't have a fenced in backyard. We mow, blow and go, and we move to the next one. 
And my truck only needs to move maybe four or five times during the day just so that the mower don't have so far to drive. We go in, we knock out these, we finish that neighborhood, the next day they're going to a different neighborhood. I'm identifying where I want to work. But now, that's just for the mowing side. Now, yes, on our landscape installation services, I want to be out marketing myself to commercial clients. I need to be at the Dodge Room. I need to be members of, you know, Associated General Contractors of America. So I'm getting these bid invitations to bid on these commercial properties. Now, for my residential side, if I want to be doing the outdoor kitchens, I'm focusing on that. And so guys, you may have to run different social media campaigns for the different services that you offer. If you've come to some of my seminars in the past, you've heard me talk about each segment of your business really should be its own company using its own books. That way you can tell which one's making money and which one's not. You know, if your mowing division is making money, it needs to be separate because guys, one day you may want to sell that segment of the business. And if it's got its own books, its own equipment, its own employees, you're doing that. It, it's easy to divide that up and sell it. Identify your competitors. Know who's working in these neighborhoods. Now guys, again, there's a difference between a competitor and a colleague. The competitor is the fly-by-nighter who's just bought the mower, just bought the trailer, who has no training, who has no license, who's not educating themselves. Those are your competitors. Your colleagues are the ones out there with the same credentials that you have, that pay the same insurance that you have. Those are your competitors. And so identify those, not only for yourself, but also for your clients. Because if you're sitting down at the kitchen table with them, and you're, well, look, I, I, ma'am, sir, I know for a fact, um, you, know, you know, they might be nice people, they may charge a little bit less, but you know why I charge less? Because I pay workers comp, I pay general liability, I have errors and in, errors and in emissions insurance because I'm a designer too. I have a general contractor's license. I have a landscape contractor's license. I went to school for this. I spent five years going to school learning how to become a horticulturalist or a landscape architect. I went to my community college. I learned this. I took business classes. I am a legit business. Jim Bob over there with the trailer and the mower he, does he have that? And if he does, that's great. But I can almost bet you that, that he doesn't. So identify it so you can tell your clients what you have and that they don't. Now trust me, it's better not to degrade another company, and I would never do that, even if they were a competitor. But I know how to brag on myself. And I can guarantee you that if I get in front of Mr. and Ms. Smith sitting at the kitchen table, I will, 95% of the time, I will have the contract signed and a check written out to the company for a down payment. I have that confidence and I know that I can do it. If they're gonna, if they're gonna call me for an estimate, I'm more than likely gonna get the job. Identify advantages and disadvantages. Um, and guys, that can, that can be for, for your company. What is it that I'm good at? Well, I'm good at mowing grass. Then, then take it and run with it. Or I'm good at pruning. I know how to hand prune. I took Eric's class at Forsyth Tech. I know how to prune. And I do it by hand. Blow it up. That's your advantage. What are some of your disadvantages? Well, you don't have the equipment. You're young. You're starting out. You may not be able to afford um, a skid steer right away to do big grading jobs on a, on a residential site. Th that, that is a disadvantage, but it's a goal that you can accomplish and actually work towards. Um, determine the most efficient methods to reach buyers. Oh my goodness, how many times have we talked about that? It is social media and it doesn't cost you a thing. Now, is putting flyers on the door good? Absolutely, absolutely. Because there's gonna be people that may be not thinking about hiring someone to do some work, but I guarantee if you went into, if you went into a neighborhood, you go into a neighborhood, 
with some flyers. Now I recommend four color, and that's, that's actually like a photograph. You know, you photograph it, it's four color. Um, you've got a picture of what you're doing, and on the back side of the flyer, you have a one color listing, one, your phone number, two, your website, and then the rest of it should be your social media. Follow me on Instagram, add me on Snapchat, subscribe to my YouTube page, and blow it up. Now, yes, is there gonna be people that ball that flyer up and throw it in a trash can? Absolutely. Are there gonna be people that call you and, and, and kind of give you a hard time about putting a flyer on their door? Absolutely. But guys, come on. It's not that big a deal. It doesn't hurt your feelings. It's just, it's just conducting business. Put the flyers on the door with that information and then blow up your social media. And once you get in a neighborhood, you're gonna get more and more clients because then they're going to see that lettered up truck and trailer and you're gonna be the expert for that, for that entire subdivision. And so what you're doing is you're developing and you're implementing that plan. Call it your action plan. Flyers on the door with all my social media and then blow up your social media. And if you do a landscape job, have a nice tri-colored brochure that you're putting on the doors. Have the nice yard sign, again, with all your social media. And then take pictures. Take pictures of every single job that you do. Have a million photographs, ones that you can pull from year after year. And put it on social media. Have an online portfolio on Facebook, on your website, always. And then talk about the job. And, and one thing that I love doing is if you can get your clients in front of the camera with you talking about the job itself. Hey, this is Mr. and Ms. Smith. Um, we hired Elite Landscape Service to do this outdoor kitchen for us. As you can see, we've got our nice grill here. We've got the refrigerator. We've got the 80 inch flat screen TV um, because I'm a big football fan and every Sunday I want to lay out here and watch and watch football. And it's a two to three minute YouTube talking about what you did for them. You're not saying 10% off the next installation that we do. You have word of mouth now becoming a video that's going to, going to become world of mouth once you put it on the social media. If they can do that, let them do it. Um, you've got to have quality work. You have to do the best job that you can do. Enjoy your work. It's your passion and pour your heart and soul into it and document it. I cannot stress this enough. You're asking me, why is this all I talk about? Because guys, it works. And I tell contractors over and over again, do this, but guess what? They don't, they don't. And so I'm gonna push it out there and you're gonna hear me talk about it repeatedly over and over again, but are you gonna do it? That is totally up to you. And then advertising and promotion. Now, once you have a substantial follower list, it's okay to run a paid ad and say, yes, we're offering plug-in and seeding services because it's August and you're trying to build up some new clients for plug-in and seeding. You're gonna develop that to them. You're gonna promote that on Facebook, Instagram. You're gonna spend that seven to eight bucks per thousand people that it can get in front of. And guys, the cool thing about it, on Facebook, you can, you can direct it where that traffic goes. You can actually have it send it to new homeowners. You can send it to, to divorcees. You can send it to people that just recently got married and bought that new house. It will help you determine the type of the, the, the clientele that you're wanting to work for. It can base it on price. You can get in front of that person that you want to get in front of. Because yes, if someone's living in an apartment because they're young starting out, there's nothing wrong with that. But they're not interested in buying an outdoor kitchen. The new homeowner that's just bought it, bought a house that cost $200,000, they may be looking for an outdoor room or an outdoor kitchen, or they may just be looking for someone to mow their grass. It's okay to do that. You don't wanna send it out to everybody because the young 18 year old that's just enlisted in the military doesn't need landscaping services either. So you can target who you want to be in front of with your Facebook and Instagram ads. 
no cost advertising. Now, the truck needs to be blown up. You got to have that company image. You got to have that, that brand that you put into your business. Now that brand can be your, 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 your company name, it can be the company logo, it can be the picture of you, it's whatever you're building, but you have to build it. And it has to be all over your trucks, it has to be all over your equipment, it has to be all over your written correspondence. Yes, there's still, still people out there in this world that have never licked a stamp and actually mailed a check or mailed a letter or anything because they grew up in the electronic world and that's say okay but as a business owner you're still going to have to have correspondence written correspondence letterhead envelopes with your name company logo on it you've got to have it you have to be so proud of your logo and your company that it's on everything heck go get a tattoo of it you know i'm gonna get turf teacher put right on my left arm you know the big big logo and i i, I kid my kids uh, about this, that, but when I'm no longer here on earth, the only thing that my tombstone is going to say, it's going to be the Turf Teacher logo. I'm not worried about my name, just Turf Teacher right on my headstone, my, uh, uh, my stone uh, where they bury me. Brag about it, guys. This is the one time that you can actually brag on yourself and it not seem cocky or arrogant. It's just being professional. All right, personnel your personnel that work for you. Now, when it comes to marketing your business, guys, you have to take care of your employees. Employees are always first. If you put your employees first, they're gonna put your clients first. And that's what you're gonna have to do. And yes, they all need to have uniforms. I know from experience, you know, all the way back, I remember the first time that we implemented uniforms, we went through a uniform company. We had green pants, we had brown button-up shirts, and our guys absolutely hated it. We had people quit because we were going to a uniform. We're like, guys, this cost five bucks a week. You're spending that on laundry detergent and power washing your clothes that you're wearing every every single day. We even given them an allowance for for steel toe boots, and they quit. And then the ones that stayed just complained about. There's there were you know there were guys that that embraced it and were proud of it and wore it every day. And then they got mad about the brown shirts, and so they're like, why can't we wear the t-shirts? Well, okay, we'll wear t-shirts. We had long sleeve t-shirts. We had short sleeve t-shirts. We give them a long sleeve t-shirt. They still cut the sleeves off because they wanted to be cool. And what they did with the um, short sleeve shirts is they cut the underneath the armpits out. And I'm just, guys, I'm sorry, but you're no longer employed here. It's the way it's gonna be. Their appearance and their demeanor is a direct example of you. Now, as a business owner, if you've had a bad night, if you've stayed up all night trying to figure out how to pay bills, or if you've had a personal issue with, with a kid, with a child or a spouse, you can't bring that into the office because employees pick up on your demeanor and it's gonna carry out through the rest of the day. You cannot, cannot um, show anger or anything like that once you walk in because it's gonna pick up. Now, yes, if somebody, one of your employees has done wrong, yes, you know, sit down and talk to them and let them know that you're upset. But if you're having outside personal issues, you can't let them know. Recruiting, we're, we always have a job opening at Elite Landscape Service, always. If somebody comes up to us and says, hey, you know, I'd like a job, we're willing to talk to them. What's your resume look like? What's your work experience? Well, Mr. Jones, I found you on Instagram. I really like what you're doing. I saw that job uh, that you did in Lockhurst. Um, that's what I wanna do. I have my two-year degree in horticulture. Um, I, do, I did go and take the certification uh, exam to get my pesticide license, but uh, I'm certified. I just haven't paid the license, uh, but I am a certified applicator, so I can work directly underneath your license. Um, I just like what you guys can do. You know, can we can we talk about that? Absolutely. So you, thank you for finding me on social media, guys. It happens. So you're recruiting every day by documenting your company, and then certification. 
if you hire somebody and they want to get that certified plant professional certification, let them do it. If they want to become a certified arborist, pay for it. If they want to go to school at night and continue their education, do tuition reimbursement. And then let them feel like they're a part of the organization. And if you're joining a green industry organization such as Planet or uh, ISA, ASLA, you know, let your, let your employees be a part of that as well. That is a very, very rewarding thing for somebody new just starting out in the green industry. And I have so many times this question come up. Well, if I'm doing all this for, for my customer, you know, for my, for my employees, um, they're gonna eventually start their own thing. Yes, those are the people that you want. Why would you want somebody that doesn't have that ambition? that all they want is a paycheck. I want the person that's going to start their own business one day. Man, I'm creating a colleague for myself down the road, not a competitor. They're going to learn my ropes. That way, when they go out there and do it, they know the standard. And you know what? I'm going to hire the, the, the new graduates coming out because that's still going to be the advantage I have over an employee that left and started his or her own business. The newer generation, the newer graduates, they're still going to want to come and work for me because I'm established. And it, it drives me crazy. Well, you know, I can't do that. You know, I can't teach them every single thing. You know, I've got to, I've got to limit them on what they can do because they're going to be my competitors one day. No, they're going to be your colleagues one day because you hired them. And all this adds up to being professional. You have to have to communicate. You have to communicate what you know. And I have contractors call me every single day, Eric, hey, so-and-so got this contract and they're not a licensed landscape contractor. Well, does that client even know that you need a landscape contractor license? It is up to us to communicate everything about our green industry business. Explain it, point it out, take pride in what you do and always, always document what you're doing on social media and refrain from criticizing the competitors. If somebody wants to go with somebody because of a cheaper price, that's fine and dandy. Leave them your card, send them that thank you note. If it doesn't work out with ABC Landscaping, call me, we're here for you. By the way, subscribe to our YouTube page. We're gonna show you how everything's done correctly. They're gonna come back to you. People that hire someone or, or choose somebody else because another comp, you know, uh, um, competitor underbid us, guys, nine times out of ten, we end up going back a year, two years, maybe even three years later because they weren't happy with the service that the undercut, undercut contractor give them. You know, if you do cheap work, or if you charge cheap prices, you're gonna do cheap work. That's just as simple as it is. And sometimes it just takes the client understanding that. Advertising again, cold calls. Maybe to some commercial clients, yes. Pick up the phone, hey, who's doing your snow removal service? You know, would you like a bid on it? You know, but again, we're gonna market and advertise uh, for commercial snow contracts in what months? June, July, August, the hottest part of the year is when we're gonna get those clients. One, because it's that time of year for the new physical year. And referrals, always, always take the referrals. Those are the best things. And still, even over social media, word of mouth uh, is the, the, um, the number one way to get new work. But guys, what if that word of mouth is on your social media? If you can capture your clients talking about you on video or even voice through audio on a podcast that is so much more dominant than a written statement on a website. Well, this is Mr. Ms. Smith, Eric Jones with Elite Landscape Service did a great job in our outdoor kitchen. We would hire him again. A potential client might think that I'm the one that typed that up. But if they see the video, hey, this is Mr. Miss Smith. We hired Eric with Elite Landscape Service. Take a look back here at our outdoor patio and our outdoor kitchen. They've done a wonderful job. We've had our families over. I mean, we don't even want to go out to eat on the weekends. We want to invite people coming over to our house to, 
to enjoy our new outdoor kitchen. Perfect. You can't fake that. You can't fake the smile. You can't fake any of it. It's on your social media and they love it. That is the best referral that you'll ever get. Again, word of mouth becomes world of mouth. Well, let's talk a little bit about traditional. When it comes to TV, radio, newspapers, um, you know, it's out, guys. I mean, NBC, ABC, CBS, you know, they're on their way out. My kids don't watch television. They don't. They watch YouTube. They watch YouTube TV. They watch Netflix. They watch IGTV. Everything is mobile. Everything is on the go. They don't sit down and watch a movie on the TV. They'd rather watch it on their phone. Yeah, I'm going to watch a movie while we drive to uh, uh, get something to eat. And over a period of the weekend, my kids might watch two movies on their phones versus sitting down on the couch watching it. So is TV out? Yes, I would not spend any money on a TV ad. I may or may not do a radio commercial. I don't know. Radio is expensive. I've even found out in years past when we were doing television ads that the TV, especially on cable TV, it was cheaper than the radio. And yes, we have used newspapers, but again, guys, this was before social media. So television, radio, and newspaper, it's probably on the way out. If I'm going to write an article, for, the, I'd rather write the article and put it on my LinkedIn page. If I was going to do a radio commercial, I'd rather do a radio podcast and put it up on iTunes or put it up on iHeartRadio, which I know how to do that. All of my lectures go to the main audio websites and audio apps. That was one of the coolest things I've ever done is to actually see my lectures pop up on iTunes. Love it. That's not bragging. That's being proud of what I do. I put all of it there. Business publications, maybe, maybe not. If you're a vendor selling to other landscapers, yes, yes, I could see doing that. Yellow pages, absolutely not, man. People do not take the phone book. People don't get the paper anymore. Yeah, it might be worth having your name listed in the yellow pages. That way you can get a white page listing if somebody had to look it up. But nine times out of ten, they're not even going to pull the phone book out. The phone book's used to start fire in the fireplace. They're going to Google it. They're going to Google you before they do the yellow pages. Internet, yes, you got to have. And direct mail is still good. Direct mail is still good for the older clientele that... Um, you know, it may not be on the social media, but what we're seeing every single day is that, you know, I mean, the, the number one growing followers on Twitter are grandparents. It's happening, guys. All of your traditional marketing is now becoming digital marketing. And so you've got to start thinking in that context. You've got to start thinking about who is it that you're marketing to? Who do you want to get in front of? And they're all using digital but I could still see using direct mail for businesses. If you wanted to do snow removal for commercial real estate companies, a piece of direct mail that's, that's nice will get you in front of them. But always on that piece of direct mail, have your social media listings. Um, newsletters, I still think is great, but it needs to be in the digital format. It needs to be a vlog. It needs to be a blog. It needs to be a white paper uh, for LinkedIn. Uh, it needs to be uh, typed in your Instagram post. It needs to be typed in on your Facebook post. That needs to be your monthly newsletter. And yes, you can still send it out electronically through email. Uh, and it's a good way to actually put your social media marketing uh, or your, your social media names uh, on your newsletter because there are still people that actually open up and read every single email that they get and there are people that open every piece of mail that they get so yes for certain clients the written newsletter is still good but make sure you can actually put it in digital format as well um, full-time part-time salespeople guys there's always somebody that's good at sales looking at um, doing some estimating um, and actually being a part of uh, your newsletter. 
they could actually do that for you. They could be the ones writing it for you. Um, your company resume or po profile, it needs to be a part of your social media. Uh, it needs to be the first post on your Instagram page, your first post on your business Facebook page is your company resume and your profile. And it also needs to be on your website and you need to update it whenever it needs to be updated. Don't have a picture of a job that you've done 10 years ago and then you've driven past that job and you're like, whoa, the maintenance on that property looks horrible. Disassociate your name with that, especially if you've just done something cooler, put that up, replace it in your company resume. Um, newcomers assistant groups, uh, those are, you know, those are actually been pretty good for us. We've actually done the try at home and garden show. Um, it's good for people that that's moved in and wanting to take a look at it. even, in, uh, people that's been here a while and just wanting to do some updates. Um, but there are communities out there or organizations that will help you get in front of someone that's just bought a new house in Winston-Salem. And so, yes, it's, it's pretty cool to, uh, to advertise with them. That may be in written form, but I guarantee you they've, all, they've got links to their website and links to their Facebook uh, pages to help get your name out there as well. It's just going to cost you a little bit more. The Lone and Garden Shows, yes, absolutely, if you have a chance to do that. Um, be particular, though. Um, some of the Home and Gardens, are good, but you need to take a look and see who else is there. Uh, I would recommend at least visiting two or three uh, before you went, seeing what other people did. I would actually go to the show um, that you want to participate in as a visitor before I set up as a person um, that's setting up a booth. I would go and see what what my colleagues are doing first because you, you want to make sure you've got the best booth uh, there. Community and public relations. Um, you know, get out there and do stuff for the public. Um, join local associations, you know, Better Business Bureau, uh, sponsor your kids' little league teams. Um, you know, what is it that you're doing to help the community? Do a news release. Every time something happens, uh, even though people may or may not read the paper or may not watch the 6 o'clock news, still have it available where you can submit that press release really, really quick. Find out who um, that person is at the paper. Find out who uh, the person is at Channel 8, Channel 2, and News Channel 12. Find out who you can just send an email to that is considered a press release. Hey, Elite Landscape Service owns a Christmas decor franchise. We have signed up to decorate the Ronald McDonald House every year for families staying there. We do that. We still done that. Even though we're not part of the Christmas decor franchise anymore, we still decorate the Ronald McDonald House just because that's something my dad's passionate about. Drop a press release. Hey, the paper's going to show up. Maybe the television, uh, local TV station will show up. But what it does is get some community exposure on what we're doing out there. Sponsor your kid's little league team. Maybe not even your kid's little league team. But put a sign up at the, out, on the outfield fence. You know, give money towards that. Be known in the community and show that you care about, about the community. Um, do you have an expanding market niche or an add-on service that you want people to know about? This could be landscape renovation. Hey, we now offer services where we'll come in and rejuvenate your front foundation planting in one day. We'll design it with Pro Landscape in the truck, let you look at it, get the plants shipped here um, by lunchtime, and by the end of the day, you've got a fresh new landscape. Or are you doing seasonal color? We had a little thing going called annual decor where we were doing annual beds and we had a lot of clients that that's all we did. We could do container growers, you know, pots for them on their patios, you know, twice a year. We do color beds out front near the end of the driveway for the clients, annual decor, blow it up on your social media. Hey, it's time to do turf aeration. You know, this is what you need to be doing in your turf grass this time of year. Let's do it and let's blow it up on social media. Or if you're doing things like athletic field maintenance, or uh, if you're now 
doing water features and you're set up to, to do koi ponds, market it, show how to do it, and document doing it, and you're going to get clients. Um, again, more add-on services, snow removal, holiday decorations, and, and think about what are some other things uh, that you can do. I always tell my students, if you're good at pruning and you love how to prune and you can prune by hand, you will stay covered up in work by just doing hand pruning. Yes, it might not be the most glamorous thing in the world to do, but hey, you can buy one of your employees, show them what to do, buy them a nice headset, because they're gonna have their phone definitely, have their headphones in and let them prune away. And guys, you can actually charge, you know, 80, 85 bucks an hour for pruning, hand pruning and doing a good job. That is a specialty niche market. Franchising, eh, yes, we've owned a franchise. We bought Christmas decor because we wanted to get into the holiday and event decorating market. It was probably one of the best things we did. We learned a lot about business. We learned about networking. We learned about um, colleagues. We had a network of people that we could depend on. Now, that may or may not work for some people. Uh, if you're new to the business and you don't know anything about horticulture, I'd say go for it. But if you've been to school, got the license, you probably don't necessarily have to get a franchise unless you're looking for that brand that's already developed. And then um, a personal, personal you know, um, thing about being a part of something that's already established or feeling proud about starting something on your own. Um, why do customers go to another lawn or landscape management firm? Well, this is out of 100 uh, people survey, guys. You know, 68 I'm reporting there was an indifference attitude to the customer by the employees. Wow. So clients didn't like what the employees were doing or saying to them. That is unreal. Again, you have to take care of your employees so that they take care of your clients. 14 were dissatisfied with the service. Nine was a more competitive price. Five was other relationships. We've seen that happen a lot. We just got asked to submit a bid on a commercial piece of property that we've had for years. I mean, years. And we just found out that the new manager of the site has a nephew that just started a lawn care business. So we know what that's about. It's going to happen. Relocation, you know, three. And then death, unfortunately, you know, as clients get older, they, they pass on. And so you're going to lose clients towards that. So that was a nice little survey um, that was in the uh, uh, professional landscape management textbook we use at the college and then handling customer complaints and keeping the clients. You have to be on target with this and you have to respond immediately. Residential and commercial clientele demand good services. It's the only commodity that landscape management firms offer. And customers are gonna look for these measurable standards. Zero errors in orders and paperwork. So your, your contracts, your change orders, they have to be perfect. On-time performance. Be on time 100% of the time for appointments or scheduled visits. If, if Ms. Smith is, is wanting to meet with you at five o'clock on a Thursday afternoon, meet with her. Be there at 4.50, waiting on her. Be there on time and be prompt. Quick resolution to the problems. Clients expect you to correct the problems. And that satisfaction depends on the time required to fix the problem. If you're large enough, you may have this crew that or one person crew that all they do is go out and put out fires eric you guys were here this morning they didn't blow off my back patio i'm going to be fuming i'm going to be steaming but you know what that crew still out mow it i'll send out my um my my we would have to come up with a name for it but we'll send out that one person crew that's got a backpack blower and a weed eater and you know small tools on the truck so they can take care of that you want to get it done you want to get it done that day very very quickly concerns clients deserve genuine concern and care they're paying for it and a few positive strokes is going to go a long long ways towards making them happy and then always give an honest answer to the problem be truthful they want to hear honest, enthusiastic answers to their problems that arise in their yards. 
I don't know, but I'll find out works better than any other thing you can say if you don't know the answer. Miss Smith, I should know this, and I apologize that I don't, but you know what? I'm going to take this back to our shop. I'm going to identify this weed, and I'm going to let you know, and I'm going to let you know the chemical that we need to take care of it. Be honest. That's all people want. And then have that positive attitude when correcting a mistake. No problem. It, hey, it was our fault. It's always your fault as the business owner. Always. No matter what. But fix it and say, yes, we will take care of it and do it with a smile. That's going to go so much further than, than fighting back with them. I can't, can't understand it. I've seen it happen so many times that the business owner gets mad at the customer. <laughs> that is so wrong. That is so wrong. No matter what happens, accept it as your fault, make the customer happy, and you're going to keep them as a client. And then be spontaneous and have some flexibility in your scheduling. Key employees and management must be flexible to handle the minor problems and adjustments on the spot. So if there is a tree that you just planted that's dying, that you planted two weeks ago, and your mowing crew shows up, and they notice that, that it's dry, they need to be able to say, for one, identify that it's dry, maybe two, look at it and say, hey, that zone on the irrigation system isn't coming on. Eric, hey, we need to get Steve over here. Uh, it looks like zone four may or may not be coming on because this tree we planted is awful dry. It hasn't been watered. Everything else looks good. You know, have them come over there. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. We're going to get Steve right over there right away. Simple as that. They need to have some flexibility on making that call. Call you. Call yourself. Call the boss and say, hey, we need to work on that. And so, guys, hopefully... Hopefully this has helped a little bit when it comes to, to marketing your landscape management services. You know, like I said, beginning of the, of the, of the beginning of this uh, podcast is that it's February. We need to be banging out our social media. We need to be banging out in the neighborhoods, putting flyers on the door, keeping the trucks washed, having your employees in the uniforms, having potential clients go to your social media sites and post, post, post. In Instagram, they call it the $1.80 theory. Now let's think about this. You have a $1.80, so one period 80. And what this means, the $1.80 theory is your two cents, so that's .02, two cents, times nine posts per day. So if you post on Instagram at least nine times a day, your two cents, that's what? Point one eight. So that's 18 cents. And if you, along with those nine posts, add 10 hashtags, so you take that 10 and multiply it times the point one eight, that's going to give you a dollar eighty. Your two cents, nine times a day with 10 hashtags will give you the dollar eighty cents that Gary V preaches over and over again, it will build your Instagram. It will build your social media sites, guys. And that's what we want to do in the green industry. Whether you're a student looking for a new job, if you're an existing contractor looking for new work and looking for new employees, market yourself has now become meaty. Well, is now become documenting yourself. Marketing is now documenting. You're not only a horticulture business, you're a media business. Thanks guys, I'll see you in the next one.